Hi, and welcome to another episode of Jesse Speck YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to continue to dive into the rebuild of the 2ZZ engine. As you all know, when we start a project car, we always think, oh, oh I'm just going to open it up and look at it. But in the end, we all end up changing all kinds of parts. So that's what happened to me. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. All right, so I just removed the old oil pump, as you can see here. It wasn't failing, but I got a brand new one really cheaply. So I think it's a good idea just while we're at it to, to actually replace it directly and actually save the hassle in case this one is faulty for some reason. I am not a big fan of overly preventive maintenance but this is typically something that is known to be a weak point of this engine. So by the way, that's somebody in the Instagram comments who gave me this recommendation. And after further research, I actually realized that it's true. So thank you for that. And we're going to be replacing this now. All right. So it goes, of course, without saying that all gas kits must be replaced. So this is the old one. This is the new one. It's always important also to make sure that the surfaces are really clean where the, the gaskets come on to. As you can see here, there's nothing to be worried about right now. There's, so there's only one way this gasket can be, it can be installed. There's only one way. So I, that was just the thing I was checking to make sure to do nothing wrong. There we go. And next is the brand new oil pump. Pair it quickly with the old one. As you can see, they're identical. They're both Asian pumps. So that's perfect. So I'm going to install this now. It's worth mentioning that assembling engine parts is a good idea to use some assembly assembly lube i use this brand it's actually more of a oil viscosity increaser as you can see it's really thick like honey almost and that's really good for putting engines together you know all things you put together they have to be really nice and holding together well and have a lot of lubrification instead of installing installing everything dry you can put this kind of lubricant on it and it's uh, just a safe thing to do i always do that when i assemble engines so here we go going back on here also really important since this pump is brand new and has no oil in it it will be really important to uh, get the oil pressure up and ready before starting the engine Screws back in. Although it doesn't say it in the Toyota workshop manual, to be honest, I like doing that, especially when it's parts that could come loose or that are tiny screws like this. I like to put some Loctite onto the threads around the oil pump. So I took it back out just so I can show you. So these bolts have to be tightened to nine Newton meters. I like to tighten things in a crossed fashion like this. There we go. And it's all back together. What I like to use is a, a cutter blade and clean all the surfaces where the, the gaskets push on.
next up is the timing chain setting. So as you can see here, we have three orange uh, parts of the chain that are actually painted in orange. And basically what we have to do is on each uh, timing chain pinion, there is a marking here. There's one here and here and down here as well on the pinion. I will blend in a picture for that so you can see. And basically what, what we have to do is by putting the tensioners back in, we will put the chain under tension and make sure that all these elements are exactly aligned according to the spec. And then start tightening these elements as well. So we can then put the casing back on and the chain tensioner basically put it back in so we can tighten the chain like this. Okay, so we're getting to the point where we're going to install the the cover, timing chain cover, and you see I'm keeping it a little clean. So I have replaced all the gaskets you see here, cleaned them off. I've replaced this one as well for the water pump, added the, the paste here that they ask for, and I've replaced also this uh, crank seal coming out, and I've lubricated it as well. Now the next step will be to add the, the, the missing paste at the four elements where you see basically this is between the head and the block and the block is actually in two pieces let me just see it right here so you have the you can split off the half from here basically so it's important to put some sealant in each one of these areas so I'm going to do this right now Also very important, make sure to have the surface perfectly clean. Clean and also grease free. Okay, so here we are here. Okay, so you see the four points here, 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 and here. Now let's put back the on. Now we're going to torque everything. Now we'll install the tensioner of the chain. So important is to lubricate again. Just the tip, this part here. And as you can see, I have to hook in the tensioner. As you see, if I need to basically hook it in. Like this. Okay, here it comes. There we go. So now it's stuck in like this, okay? And then we're gonna put it in here, like this. Okay, so I just need to, the front part is oily. However, where the gasket is, it has to be really clean and dry. Gasket has to be perfectly clean and dry in here too. There we go. So, now we put it in.
So now we're going to have to activate the tensioner because it's hooked in like this. So how do you do this is by turning counter clockwise a tiny bit to the crank like this till it clicks like it just did. And then after you can inspect in here and you will see if it's disconnected and you will hear it go into tension. And I can see now that it just unclicked and it's perfectly under tension right now. So just to do things right, I'm going to shift over the little the little uh, hook inside here with a, with a screwdriver just so it's out of the way. Take the screwdriver here. Put it down over there. There we go. Okay. And the chain that is under tension right now. And now I will torque this at 118 Newton meters. Now let's see if the engine turns correctly and nothing is hitting to make sure everything works well. Usually we say two tenths of the crank completely. Let's take a look, feel everything. Sounds good. So after verification and turning my crank multiple times, I can see that my alignment, the, the colors have moved of course because the chain has been turning, but I can tell that first of all, by turning it, the engine went freely and by being on zero here, I'm exactly on par with the, the um, references that Toyota gives me in order to have the cams perfectly adjusted. So cam timing is now also set. Now I just need to torque, torque this. Usually you can do it before, but I thought before putting too much force on it, I just wanted to make sure every, everything's turning freely. So let's get into it. Okay, next step, replacing the, oil, uh, the water pump. This one was still okay, but I think also as preventive maintenance, I'm gonna change it. It would be a shame to destroy an engine just by being lazy and not changing. So here, again, stock Toyota part, brand new, ready to go in. It's identical, it's also made by ASIM. So let's go, let's go for it. First point, new gasket. So let's clean out this part here. There we go. Then brand new gasket in. It holds in, perfect. And then, install the new pump. Like so. Okay. so let's get all the screws. As you can see, I painted my valve cover in blue. Um, what's important when removing, when replacing this, reinstalling this, is putting a brand new gasket. That's what I did. So brand new gaskets here, all around, and these four also were brand new. So now we have a brand new gasket also for this little tube here, and then we'll be good to go for installation. I just need to add a still a tiny bit of uh, sealant right here. And once that is done, then we can install the, the, the head cover. So that's what we're gonna do. Since we have the, 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 the head over here and the, the, um, the timing chain cover coming right here, there's a gap in between here. So that's why it's important to add some paste here in order to make sure that we have a decent sealing going on here. go same over here okay and now they recommend to quickly install the head 
Also, I cleaned all the surface around here, so that's really important. Otherwise, it will not seal correctly. And those are all kinds of little things that can be a real pain if you don't do them correctly. Okay, so I'll check the gasket one more time. Okay, let's go. Now we can start putting the screws back. All right, we're back in the office. As you've seen, I've walked you through all the steps I decided were important in order to sort of rebuild my engine, change the oil pump, the water pump, etc. So from now, things are gonna actually get more interesting because we can finally start putting the engine back into the car. I still have to do the transmission, so there will be a video about the transmission. But in any case, thank you very much for watching the video until the end. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do, it really helps. And of course, if you've liked what you've seen, make sure to thumbs up the video. That always helps for the YouTube algorithm. So if you didn't do it, please do it now. Thank you. And in any case, see you next week. Peace.